In the world of conspiracy theories, the name Bob Lazar is very well known. But this is an automotive channel. So why would I be making a video on him? Well, it's simple. Apparently, he built a hydrogen-powered Corvette. Now, for those of you that watch a lot of my videos, you'll know that I, I, I'm a massive fan of hydrogen and I make a lot of videos on the topic. So in this video, we'll be exploring the car itself, the technology behind it and how it works, as well as the man himself. So let's start this whole video off with one question. Who is Bob Lazar? Robert Scott Lazar emerged into public consciousness in the late 1980s with a story that seemed ripped from the pages of science fiction. He alleged that he was recruited by a shadowy government agency to work at a covert facility known as S4, nestled in the vicinity of the infamous Area 51 in Nevada. According to Lazar, his task was to reverse engineer technology derived from extraterrestrial spacecraft. Lazar's narrative unfolds with remarkable detail. He claims to have not only laid eyes on alien craft, but also delved into classified government documents that purportedly detail millennia-long interactions between humans and extraterrestrial beings. His assertions thrust Area 51 into the spotlight, igniting a firestorm of speculation about its clandestine activities, fueling conspiracy theories about government cover-ups. Central to Lazar's extraordinary claims are the alleged extraterrestrial spacecraft he encountered. He speaks of a fleet of flying saucers, including one dubbed the Sport Model, constructed from a mysterious metallic substance akin to liquid titanium. These crafts purportedly operated on an advanced propulsion system fueled by an element with an atomic number of 115, an element that had not yet been synthesized at the time of Lazar's revelations. According to Lazar, this antimatter reactor generated a gravity wave that enabled the spacecraft to fly and evade visual detection by bending light around it. He described intricate details of the craft's interior, including a central reactor surrounded by gravity amplifiers and emitters. Lazar's encounters painted a picture of technology far beyond our earthly comprehension, shrouded in secrecy and intrigue. But how the hell did he manage to get to work at the mysterious Ace 4? While Bob Lazar claimed to have obtained a master's degree in physics from the Massachusetts Mash, I don't know how to say that word. How to pronounce Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay, I've got it. From the Massachusetts. From MIT. He also pursued a degree in electronics from the California Institute of Technology, otherwise known as Caltech. He also asserted that he pursued advanced studies at these prestigious institutions, specializing in fields directly relevant to his purported work in reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology. In other words, he was a super smart dude, and because of this, he got recruited. So, we now have a bit of background info on the man. By the way, I summarized a ton. His claims are crazy, and I won't lie, it's fun to sit and listen to him talk about his experiences. But this is not a video about aliens and spacecraft. Um, this is a video about the car he converted to run on hydrogen. So, let's get more into that. Now, back then, obviously many people thought that this guy was crazy. But amidst all of this, Bob Lazar started a new chapter, and this one promised to revolutionize the automotive industry and challenge conventional notions of fuel efficiency. At the heart of this chapter lies a hydrogen-powered Corvette, a project spearheaded by Lazar's company, United Nuclear. You see, Bob Lazar, through his company, United Nuclear, ventured into uncharted territory with a hydrogen conversion kit designed for fuel-injected gasoline engine vehicles. The idea was simple, design a kit that would convert any direct injection gas engine to run on hydrogen. What's more is that he tested one of these kits on his Corvette and apparently drove it over 50,000 miles. And he didn't simply stop at converting the cars. As part of the kit, you could buy your own hydrogen generator. The generators consisted of solar or wind-powered hydrogen production systems that then stored the hydrogen in hydride, 
which would release the hydrogen when you heated the compound. Now, this all sounds great, but it gets even better. In around three days, you could produce enough hydrogen to fill your car, which was good for around 450 miles. And remember, it's free since you make it at home using nothing but wind or sun. But let's get a bit deeper. How did it all work? Well, the conversion kit operated by introducing hydrogen gas into the engine's air intake, precisely metered to maintain optimal combustion ratios. Notably, the stock gasoline fuel injection system remained intact, allowing for seamless transitions between hydrogen and gasoline operation. So, if your hydrogen got low, you could just continue driving on normal gasoline. Now, with his proven prototype, plans were in motion to release this to the public. So, what exactly happened? Well, despite the promise of Lazar's hydrogen conversion kit, legal hurdles delayed its commercial availability. The Consumer Product Safety Commission's intervention aimed at regulating chemical compounds had cast a shadow over United Nucleus endeavors. Now, back then, Pop remained optimistic. But we are in 2023 and nothing has happened, so I'm guessing it all went to shit, which would be sad if it worked. But did it? Let's, let's delve a bit into that. While Bob Lazar's hydrogen-powered Corvette project may seem like a revolutionary leap forward in automotive technology, it's essential to scrutinize the claims and assess the feasibility of his prototype. I mean, with a basic understanding of how hydrogen would work, in a combustion engine, anybody could make a car that seems to work on hydrogen. The problem is building a car that actually is able to run on the fuel. Now on this channel, we have explored hydrogen and how it would work on combustion engines on numerous occasions. You see, while hydrogen fuel technology holds promise for a greener, cleaner future, the practical implementation of such systems involve intricate engineering and stringent safety standards. And I'm not even sure that he's system would work in the first place, which is why I think he left the gasoline fuel system intact. Let me explain. Hydrogen as a fuel is a much more complicated conversion than most would think. Firstly, hydrogen needs to be kept at crazy high pressures, so the tanks and fuel lines need to be really, really strong, which maybe his ones were. But that's the easy part. You see, hydrogen burns differently to gasoline. So having a car that can switch between the two is almost impossible. A gasoline engine runs at the stoichiometric perfect air fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1. In other words, 14.7 grams of air per gram of fuel. Whereas hydrogen needs 34 grams of air per 1 pound of hydrogen. In other words, the tuning would be screwed. But maybe he had multiple computer modes. They did say in the brochure that the electrical system would be modified. So, maybe. On to the next problem, fuel delivery. So companies like Toyota, Cummins, Bosch and AVL are all using direct injection, some with water cooling to inject the hydrogen directly into the engine. Our friend Bob just injected it in through the air intake, which is pretty much port injection. Now with gasoline, port injection is fine. It's a little difficult to get the fuel mixtures as precise as with direct injection, but it still works perfectly fine. With hydrogen, fine isn't good enough. You see, hydrogen re requires very low energy to ignite, which is good because you can run these things on very lean mixes and they would run just fine. But it is also bad because it makes pre-ignition a real problem. Something as simple as a hotspot in your cylinder head or even in the cylinder itself could make the whole thing go kaboom which is why companies push the hydrogen directly into the engine and why some use water cooling in combination with the fuel. Now, his way around this was using low compression engines and not using anything with forced induction. And yes, that would help, but damn, these engines would be sluggish. I'm not going to go deep into the math, but hydrogen engines without the help of turbochargers or high compression are kind of um, pathetic. I mean, BMW made a 6-litre V12 naturally aspirated that ran on hydrogen, this was also direct injected, and it made around 250 horsepower out of a V12. Now, Toyota is making a little 3-cylinder hydrogen engine with high compression and a turbocharger, and the result is 360 horsepower. See what I mean? In other words, the car either didn't work or it would be so slow. 
But I mean, I'm just a stupid kid from South Africa. This would be a simple task for a man that allegedly rebuilt spacecraft. Well, we can get into that as well. Now, I'm not going to do a hit piece on the guy. So if you want a deeper analysis, there are countless articles and videos going into crazy depth on why you should take his stories with a grain of salt. You can do some more research if you would like, but we can summarize in today's video. Firstly, there is a lot of inconsistencies in his educational and employment history. For instance, his degrees at MIT and Caltech. While well, there is no record of his attendance or graduation from these universities. Then for employment, Lazar asserts that he worked at Los Almos Mason Physics Facility as a physicist or technician. However, investigations into his employment history revealed that he was employed as an electrical technician for a contract firm, not as a physicist at Los Almos. And there is a lot of proof that he was only an electrical technician and not a physicist. Also, he ran multiple brothels. He got in trouble for lending money and not giving it back. And he got in trouble for selling illegal chemicals. And not a slap on the wrist either. Actual legal troubles. All of this brings his character into question. I mean, if he did all of these illegal things, why would he not lie? And I will say, many people will say, on the other side, maybe the government made him look bad and planted all of these things against him. But I still think that the car probably wouldn't work. And I know that there are videos on YouTube of the car working. But there is a massive lack of, of independent verification and peer-reviewed testing when talking about his creation. While Lazar may tout the success of his prototype and the accumulated miles locked in testing, the absence of rigorous scientific scrutiny raises doubts about the reliability and validity of his claims. To end it off, the enigma of Bob Lazar continues to captivate and confound enthusiasts and skeptics alike. His tales of extraterrestrial encounters and reversed engineered alien technology have left an indelible mark on the landscape of conspiracy theories and ufology. Yet amidst the fervor and speculation, discerning the, the truth from fiction remains a formidable challenge. As Lazar's narrative evolves to include claims of technological innovation such as the hydrogen-powered Corvette, the need for critical inquiry and empirical evidence becomes ever more pressing. While the allure of sensational narratives may tantalize, it is the pursuit of truth that ultimately illuminates the path forward. In the quest to unravel the mystery surrounding Bob Lazar and his extraordinary claims, one thing remains certain. Separating fact from fiction is required. And maybe I'm wrong. Hell, I would actually love it if he was telling the truth. But unfortunately, there is just so much evidence proving otherwise. Now, I just want to end this video off by touching on one thing. Um, hydrogen as a fuel source is viable. And there is a hell of a lot of companies working on it. In fact, I make a lot of videos on that. Um, Bosch has made an, a race car running on hydrogen and they are busy developing an engine for off-road vehicles and trucks. JCB did the same thing. Um, Toyota is building passenger vehicles that will run on internal combustion hydrogen engines. Cummins is working on it. Like, there's a lot of companies working on this technology. So it is viable. And nobody is trying to cover it up. I mean, like, it's all over the internet. It, there's no governments saying it's shit or nothing, it's, it's there, anybody can find it. So why would anybody cover up his inventions, but all of these new ones is like, it's fine, we don't care. But back then, it was a big problem, you have to cover it up. And you can even, some people will say, well, it's because you could create your own fuel. Um, there's a company doing that as well. And again, it's not being covered up. There's a solar panel company that allows you to generate hydrogen for your home through the solar panels. I'll link the video here if you guys want to see it. So yeah, that, that, that's my whole point behind this and even the Stanley Mayer hydrogen car. I don't doubt that hydrogen would work, but I do doubt that these specific ones didn't work. There was more a publicity stunt than an actual prototype that would work. And maybe they did work, but there was obviously problems. Otherwise, we would have it. Like it would be commercially available. It's been a lot of years. But yeah, at the end of the video, please let me know what you think of the video and what you think of this hydrogen powered Corvette. Do you disagree with me? Do you think that this whole thing worked and it was shanana, perfect, working great? Or do you think that I'm right and this is all just a bunch of BS told by a guy that liked to lie and liked the spotlight? At the end of the video, please let me know what you thought of the video, if you liked it, if you disliked it, 
Um, and if you guys did enjoy this video, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh? Thank you.